Come on, you like, yeah, we can do better than that now. Hallelujah. 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 Are you giving us life, y'all? Yeah? You're giving us breath this morning, Yahweh. Hallelujah. We want to give up to you an offering of praise, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Abba. Totally, y'all. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we told you, y'all. For the Dhamma, Yahshua. For the mercies, y'all. You have bestowed upon us, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and say, Kedusha, are you ready to hear the word of Almighty Yah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated, Israel. Told Yahweh, for truly his mercies and his Ahava, it endures through all generations. Hallelujah. I know that I need it, Israel. Where would I be without the mercies of Almighty Yahweh? Where would I be without his word or his Torah or his Mishvah? Where would I be if I was not chosen by his hand? Come on, Israel, to be chosen by his hand. And just to think that he touched each and every one of us this morning. Hallelujah. Or he got you up. It wasn't by your own strength. If it was up to most of us, we wouldn't even got up this morning. Hallelujah. We would have stayed in our beds. But it was y'all that beckoned us. It was y'all that said, get up out of that bed. It was y'all that said, stand on your feet and get ready to enter into my house. This is where Yahweh's name is written, Israel. I don't ever forget that. Not only is it, is it written where the conditions gather, but also it is written within the by it, the dwelling place of our lips. Don't ever forget that. He's given us something that is so precious that he hasn't given to anyone else. Hallelujah. How much do that mean to us, Israel? It's even worth giving up our life for him. Did not Yahshua give up his life for us? Then why, would, why wouldn't we want to? Give our life to him, whether it's living present or whether passing from this physical body, Israel. Hallelujah. He has given us so much. We have come a mighty long way. And yet it seems like the journey stretched out and it seems like there's no end, Israel. But there shall be an end and there is an end to all things. Hallelujah. Just as Yahweh started us on this journey, he is going to bring us to that ending place. Well, where is that? Well, it's his kingdom. It's his milku. It is the place where he has desired each and every one of us to this day, and those that are listening, to dwell in. Hallelujah. Nothing like these buildings that have been made by man's hands. We're going to a place that has been made by the hands of Almighty Yahweh. With well, the riches, the power, and the brightness of it shall never end, Israel. And where his word stands, hallelujah, and it never falls. Told Yahweh, Abaraki Yahweh, hallelujah. I do want to start off by beginning <clears throat> concerning the purging process of Almighty Yahweh. Those of you that might have listened last night on the broadcast, Shema Yisrael, I started talking about the purging. And it is important for us to understand the process or the purpose of a purge or being purged, Israel. I used an example years ago. Akshimri was using a type of herb. I forget the name of it, but you could get it in the tea bags. And my Isha and I, we, we tried it out. Actually, we, we actually made a mistake. A mistake. I'm gonna be honest with you, Israel. Some kind of way, it got mixed in with our tea bags. So uh, she was gonna make us some nice iced tea. And end up using the laxative in the tea bag. But what did that do? All of you that have used a laxative, especially a strong laxative, you know what that does to you. And we only have one restroom, so you know what happened there. I'm not going to go any farther than that, Israel. But that laxative, it was a strong laxative. And what a strong laxative or a tough laxative does 
it pulls out or it loosens all the grime and the grit and those things that stick within the intestinal walls and in the colon. And it goes in and it pulls all that out. Now, many times when you use a herb or something like that, it's, it's rough. The stomach cramps, there's pains, runs when you go to the restroom. It's a very unpleasant experience. Well, nowadays they've got things that, you know, it, it doesn't hurt the belly so much. You don't cramp as much. When you go to the stool, it's real smooth. But we must understand this purging process of Almighty Yahweh. As we hear, as we shema, as we take in his Torah, Many times it's bitter, somewhat going down, but yet it yields forth the abundance of fruit that Yahweh desires in our bodies. And truly, Israel, we need a purging today. We need to allow the word of Almighty Yahweh and His Ruah to move within our deep places, within our bowels, Israel. That those things that sit there, and there are things that sit within the body for years. There's certain meats that stake sometimes if your track is not operating optimally. It rests there for months and for weeks. And you think it's passed into the waste and it's still there just rotting it in, in the intestines. And one thing about the intestinal walls, if you have a clean system or a clean intestine, it will show for on your outer body. Your skin, your smell, your breath, it truly does, Israel. That's how, that's how it works. If your inward man is corrupt, then it's going to show forth on your outward man. Whether it's by how you look, how you perspire, or how you smell. So is it also in the Ruach. If you're full of unclean things in, in your body, Israel, the unclean things are going to pursue, are going to come forth out of your body. Can we get pure water and water that is stagnant out of the same well? No. You only can get pure water out of a pure well, and if the well is stagnant, no matter how much water is mixed in, when it comes out, it's impure, is it not? And it has a smell that is distasteful. It's hard to drink what they call, what they call that hard water or the water that's got that egg-like smell. Sometimes that's hard to drink. I know it is for me, Israel, right, unless it's chilled with ice to come, somewhat hold back the smell or the taste. It is hard to take that in. But Yahweh, He desires His house to be a house that is clean, a house that is purged, a house without sin, without spot or blemish or any such thing, Israel. That's what he desires of us tonight, this day, hallelujah, this morning. And we know that recently I've been talking about the fire, but yet this still concerns the cleanser and the purging by the mouth, by the Ruah, the ish of Almighty Yahweh. So let us begin, Israel, in Second Chronicles. Some of this is an excerpt of what I talked about last night, and I want to continue on and just see how the Ruach leads us on this beautiful day. Isn't that beautiful, Yisrael? Yeah. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 1. I want to begin there. It says in Second Chronicles, verse 1, that Manasseh, was 12 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. Now we must understand that Jerusalem is the capital. It is the center place. It's where Yahweh's name is written in his bayat, in his tabernacle, Yisraya. We must have this within our lives. Because in our bodies dwell the Ruach HaKodesh. Is that not right? Are we not just vesicles, vessels for the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh, his tabernacle? But did that which was evil in the sight of Almighty Yahweh. What works do we do? What do we proclaim? What do we express? Why did this king do the things which were evil in the sight of Almighty Yahweh? It's because he was yet filled with unclean things. He despised the Torah. He despised the chastening of Almighty Yahweh. He despised the word of Almighty Yah. But he did that which was evil in the sight of Almighty Yahweh, like to the abominations of the heathen whom Yahweh had cast out before the children of Israel. Let's see what Yahweh did. He cast out the heathen. He purified, cleansed his house by dispersing those 
which did not stand in the Torah, that were not elected of Almighty Yahweh. For he built again the high places. What do we do in our lives, Israel? Do we remember when we were first, as we used the term, saved? When Yahweh enlightened our bosom. When Yahweh entered into our lev, Yisrael, it seemed like there was a new process that happened. Something happened that we did not understand. It seemed like we was down with a type of a power. And not only that, it seemed like all the weight and the things that held us at that time were lifted up off of our backs. That's how my experience was. I was made new. I was changed. I wasn't the same person I was before I left off that, what we call the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something happened. Hallelujah. And it was the Ruach of Yahweh entered in. Do you remember that, Israel? From that day, have we progressed? Have we moved on? Hallelujah. I remember it seemed like it was so easy for the tears to come forth. Surely, we know that the battles have become more intense. But I desire... And I want that same experience to happen every day, not just one time. I want the rock of Yahweh to continually move in my bosom. Why? That the cleansing may continue to take place. Hallelujah. I know yet we still fall short, Israel. That's why it's important for us to remember the dawn of Yahshua HaMashiach that runs through our very veins this day. Hallelujah. Don't you know the blood cleanses the body? Not only does it provide the oxygen or the minerals or that which is needed to feed this body, but it also takes out all the impure things. It's collected in the kidneys and the intestines. It takes the blood to do that. It takes the same blood of Yahshua HaMashiach to do that today. Don't let the world fool you what is out there, Israel. Oh, it doesn't take the blood. No, it took the blood and it still takes the blood today. It takes the purification of the blood. It takes being washed in the blood. Anointed by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every day, Israel, we need this cleansing of the person of Almighty Yahweh. And at the same time, we can't allow those things which were torn down, those habits which were broken, being a new man or a new person, and Yahshua HaMashiach. We cannot go back to our old ways. We cannot turn our back or backslide as a backsliding heifer, yet I have done that. Hallelujah. I have fallen short. We have fallen short, Israel. Hallelujah. So it's important that we take heed to ourselves, that we don't allow the groves. What is that? It's the places where sacrifices are done unto gods. We all know what gods are. It's anything or anyone or anything that exalts or that, that we exalt above the power of Almighty Yahweh. And there are times that we have gods in our life. We don't want to stay or we veer off the straight path that Yahweh has elected. We have allowed our eyes to veer off of Yahshua HaMashiach. And what happens? Immediately, altars, sacrifices unto God, unto our flesh, and not unto Almighty Yahweh. Well, what's a sure sign of that? But whether you want to receive it or not, Israel, it is in our praise. It is what we present unto Almighty Yahweh. It's what we bring to offer him and his bayat, Israel. That shows what lies within the left. So if there's nothing in the heart, if the Torah is not written in the heart, then there's no praises that's going to come forth. There's no conviction of the shortcomings that we have made this past week. Hallelujah. That's why I brought Yahweh for his Shabbat. We've labored, we have toiled, we've wrestled, we have fought the enemy. And yet he gives us this day of rest, of renewal, of comfort. And we can rest in the assurance of his Torah, of his word that he has written. Yisra'ya, Abarak Yahweh for that. Even the Shabbat is a type of cleansing. Don't you know that the body, not only does it purify itself when you labor, whether it's by sweat, whether it's by eating the right vegetables or the right choices of food, exercise. Also, the body cleanses itself in rest. And rest is very key and it's very important. Yahweh knew what he was doing. Is he a man that he needs to rest his body? But yet he rested on the seventh day. 
And he knew in his foreknowledge that we need a day of rest. He knew in his foreknowledge that it had to be a day where we could be renewed, that we could face the first day again. Hallelujah. So it's a type of purging. It's a type of cleansing. The body cleanses itself. It repairs itself. If you're a weightlifter or you exercise or you're a person that is very athletic, it's important to have rest, a time of rest. If you're in the weight room and you're always working on your biceps and you're, you're constantly tearing down your muscles, you don't give them time to rest or to renew themselves, that's not going to benefit you in the long run. You're going to have cramps. You're going to be weak. So if you exercise your biceps, you might want to move to your legs and your calves. Exercise different parts of the body. But yet it's important for that time of rest. And look what Yahweh has done. Hallelujah. Almost when you thought you couldn't press any farther, he gives you the Shabbat day. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Let us move on. Second Chronicles chapter 30, uh, 33, verse 3. For he built again in the high places which Hezekiah, his avat, had broken down. And he reared up altars for Balaam. Do we walk in the Ruah or the spirit of Balaam, denying Yahshua HaMashiach, worshiping other gods, sacrificing our children uh, to this wicked uh, spirit of this age, Yisrael? And he made groves, and he worshiped all the hosts of the Shemayims, and he served them. Verse 4. Also he built altars in the house of of Almighty Yahweh. Do not in our bodies, are not our bodies the house or the dwelling place of Almighty Yahweh? Then why would we want to build altars to other gods? Altars to other reasoning of the mind or other ideas. Or we think we have a better way other than Yahweh. Why would we want to do that, Israel? Why would we want to pollute the dwelling place of Almighty Yahweh where his shame, where his name is written? Therefore, Yahweh has said, and Jerusalem shall my name be forever. He has declared that. He's not going to allow us just to pollute his house without his judgment coming forth, Israel, without the fire of his wrath. Verse 5, concerning the king. And he built altars for all the hosts of the heavens and the two courts of the house of Almighty Yahweh, my. And he caused his children to pass through the valley through the fire in the valley of the son of Hena. Think about your children, Israel. Are we rearing, are we raising our children according to the Torah, according to the Mishnah of Almighty Yahweh? Are we giving them the proper discipline that Torah commands us to give them? What is that? Well, that is using the rod and not sparing them for their crying, Israel. See, Yahweh, he doesn't spare us for our crying. When his judgment is poured out upon us, For what reason? To correct us? To purify our minds by the trials? To purify our hearts? That we not turn again from the Torah, from the Mishvah? He commands us to do that also with our children, to teach them the way. And if they go forth out of the way, then they must understand there is repercussions for that, for going forth out of the way. But do we think that... If we walk out of the way or the will of Almighty Yahweh and we establish foundations that are not sure, that will not stand, that Yahweh will not judge us, Israel, yes, he will. Hallelujah. And he will purify and purge us by trials, by tribulation, and by his judgment. Also, he observed again, he observed pagan times and used enchantments. Have we in time past? Rep, um, uh, worship or it's type of worship or were part of the pagan Christmases and the Easter and the things of that nature, Yisrael. But here, this is showing by uh, Yisrael, Jerusalem, Yahuda. As Yahweh has cleansed the house of all these things and yet because they have allowed oh, this king to come and to set up rule that all kind of abominations are allowed back into the body again. We must allow our king, Yahshua HaMashiach, to reign supreme in our lives, Israel. Because if we do not, then all kind of things will come in. We will open the door to the onslaught of the enemy, and he will make us a bowl in our left. That's what he would do, Israel. So he 
He observed again the pagan times. And he used enchantments. And he used witchcraft. And dealt with familiar spirits. And with wizards. And wrought much evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger. Do we see the things that provoke Yahweh to anger? Israel, Yah. Witchcraft. Familiar spirit. Not the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. Not the spirit of Yahweh. But of Satan of the enemy. Enchantments. Worshiping pagan times or pagan feast days. Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving. Oh, they seem like very small, minute things, but it's not Yisrael. They're pagan times of worship where the enemy works his work. Yisrael, we should not be a part of that. Yahweh has his feast days. He has his times of worship. It tells us in the Torah what days to observe. Those are the days we should observe, Yisrael. Not, not uh, Halloween and all these wicked things. And he wrought much evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of Yahweh, of which Yahweh has said to Dawid and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of of Yisrael for out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them according to the whole Torah. Did it say a little of the Torah or did it say the whole Torah? So should we walk in the whole Torah, the totality of everything? Every word of the Torah, it is pure Yisrael. It says, according to the whole Torah and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moshe. So Moshe made Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, I mean Manasseh, made Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to error by the idols, by placing these gods in the high places of Almighty Yahweh, in his tabernacles. What do we allow in our minds, Israel? If we don't watch ourselves and take heed and be very careful, Israel, we'll allow things into our love by what we hear, by what we see. And it can be very subtle. It don't take long. Even the subtle things. It is the small foxes that destroy the vine, Israel. Or we, we may do something or observe something, oh, that, 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 that's nothing. But believe it or not, there's a seed that is planted. And just like a mustard seed, which is very small, or okra seed, or kale, those seeds are very small seeds. With the right kind of watering, sunlight, what will it do? It's going to produce fruit. It's going to produce fruit, Israel. So we have to be cognizant of what we do, what we observe, what we allow into our sight, what we allow into our mind, Israel. Because if we don't, we're going to find ourselves becoming polluted by the world. We're going to allow things into the body, just as this king allowed things into the body, into the Kodesh places of Almighty Yahweh, that shall pollute the temple. That's why it's important for us to continually, Yisrael, continually have the Ruach, or have his Torah in our minds and in our hearts, Yisrael. If it's nothing but just a scripture, if you just read a scripture a day, or just allow that, Scripture to fester in your bosom, Yisrael. That's all you, all you need. That's really all you need. We must keep our minds on the Torah, on the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 8. Let's move to verse 9. So Manasseh made Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to error and to do worse evil than even the heathen. Now you think about that. You see what the heathen does. We understand what the wicked, who the wicked are. We were once there, Yisrael. you telling me that the combined sins of the wicked, those that are Rasha, and do not walk after the misfire of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, that we would do even worse than them? Why? 
Because we know the right way. We've been washed in the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Should we trample his dom under our feet? Yisrael? Come on. It said that they did worse evil than the heathen whom Yahweh had destroyed from before the children of Israel. And Yahweh spoke, uh, and Yahweh spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Is Yahweh speaking to us tonight? I mean, this morning, Israel, this day on his Shabbat? Should we receive what he is saying or should we reject it as Manasseh done? Hallelujah. Wherefore Yahweh brought upon them the captain of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with brass fetters and carried him to Babylon. And when he was afflicted, he besought Yahweh his sovereign ruler and humbled himself greatly before Yahweh, the Abba, the Abba of his Avas, and prayed to him, and he was entreated of him and heard his supplications. Do we entreat Almighty Yahweh when we fall short, Yisrael? When we allow corruption to enter in? Do we, as Manasseh, fall prostrate before Almighty Yahweh with repentance? When was the last time we really fell on our knees, Yisrael? In repentance. Before the throne of Almighty Yahweh. Asking for the forgiveness that we so much need in these last and evil days, Israel, With supplication, with crying, with tears, with palah. And brought him again to Jerusalem, into his kingdom. Then Manasseh, he knew that Yahweh, that Yahweh, he was sovereign ruler. Now after this, he built a wall without the city of Dawid. On the west side of Gion in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate, and could pass about Ophel and raise it up on every great height, a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Yahuda. Are we standing guard of our left, Israel? Are the walls of defense set up high in our minds in this city? Are we fighting the, this great warfare not to allow anything to enter into the Bayat, into Jerusalem? We must make ourselves ready at all times. We can't let down our guard in this hour, Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 14. And after this, he built a well without the city of Dawi, outside of the city. In the west of Gaia, in the valley, even unto the entrance of the fish gate, and could pass around about Alpha, and raised up every great, and raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fit cities of Yehuda. Verse 15. And he took away all the strange gods. But you see what he did, Israel? Once he repented. And he fell before the throne of Almighty Yahweh with supplication. What did he do? He began to purge. He began to get rid of those things that were uh, an offense unto Almighty Yahweh. He took away the strange gods and the idols out of the house of Yahweh. And all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of Yahweh. And in Jerusalem. And cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of Almighty Yahweh. So not only did he have to remove all those things that he had placed in the bayat, he had to repair the altar. Do we understand that we need to repair the altar, Israel? We need to repair the place that Yahweh desires us to offer to him an offering of praise and of todah and of thanksgiving unto him, Israel. We must repair those places. And it says, and he sacrificed thereon Shalom offerings and thank offerings unto Almighty Yahweh. Did we do that when we came into the body of Israel? Did not we offer shalom offerings, praise offerings unto Almighty Yahweh? And commanded Yahuda to serve Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of Israel. Listen, 
Verse 17. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places. Get to Yahweh, the sovereign ruler only. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer unto Almighty Yahweh. That must have been some kind of prayer. That must have been some kind of Pilah, Yisrael. We need prayer this, in this hour. We need a true Pilah unto Almighty Yahweh. What would that do? Just as it did unto Manasseh, it would change our whole perception of things. It would rear us in the right direction. Even though we, many a times we go astray, yet the Pilah or a true prayer unto Almighty Yahweh would bring us right back into the place where we should be at, that we could move forward, Yisrael. What happened to our prayer life? That should be a, a life of prayer in our, in our bosom, Yisrael. I would like to know what that prayer was, what he prayed unto Almighty Yahweh, hallelujah, out of the sincereness of his love, broken and contrite, hallelujah. Verse 19, his prayer also, and it was entreated of him, and all of his sins, did it say all of his sins? Verse 19, chapter 33, Second Chronicles. And call all of his sins. I want all my sins to be removed. Ones I know of and the ones maybe I don't have clarity on. I want this prayer that Manasseh prayed, I want to pray that same prayer. That the purging process of Yahweh may take place. It says all of his sins. Not only that, but his trespass. Where he crossed the path of Almighty Yahweh. Where he veered off. His trespasses. And the places wherein he built high places. And set up groves and graven images. Unclean things. Before he was humbled. We need to be humbled, Israel. How are we going to be humble? Yahweh, he has a way of humbling his people. Hallelujah. Before he was humbled, behold, they are written among all the sayings of the seers. Verse 20. So Manasseh, he slept with his fathers. What that means, he died. He passed and was buried with his fathers. And they buried him in his own house and among the sons, and, and I'm sorry, in his own house, and Amon, his son, reigned in his stead. Amon was two and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned two years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of Almighty Yahweh. Do you see the pattern, Israel? Depending on what king or what leader was over the house, that's the direction that Yahuda or Jerusalem went in. So what do we allow? Who do we allow to lead us, to guide us? Who is our king? Is it our flesh? Is it our bellies? Or is it the king, Yahshua HaMashiach? Is it almighty Yahweh? That's who it should be. Or is it lies and deceit? Is it our iniquitous practices? Whatever we allow in the head or in the high place, Israel, that's what's going to lead us. If we allow the enemy into the walls, did not Manasseh build walls to protect Jerusalem and Yehuda? If we allow anything to come into the walls, Israel, iniquity, sin, that's what will lead us. That's will, what will guide us, Israel. Verse 22 again. But he did that which was evil in the sight of Almighty Yahweh, as did Manasseh, his father. For Ammon, he began to sacrifice to all the carved images which Manasseh, his father, had made, and he served them. And humbled not himself before Almighty Yahweh. Do we find this spirit? That we don't humble ourselves in the presence of Almighty Yahweh? We don't lift up his name. There's not a brokenness or a contriteness. We enter into the presence of Almighty Yahweh. And he humbled not himself before Yahweh, as Manasseh, his father, did humble himself. But Amon trespassed more and more. If we don't find a humbling in our Ruach Yahweh, Israel, we're going to find 
ourselves transgressed in the Torah of Yah. More. More. Over and over. To the point where our transgressions and our sins will go over those of the heathen that have not even heard of Yahshua HaMashiach. They have not been given the Torah as we've been given. We've been given much, Israel. Do we think that much is not going to re- be required of us? But Amen, he transpassed more and more. And his servants conspired against him and slew him in his own house. Isn't that something, Israel? But you know, even those very things you allow into your left, you allow the enemy in. You allow sin and iniquity in. You begin to lie again. Don't you know those things is what's going to slay you? It's going to bring you to an utter end, Israel. There's no life without the Torah. There's no life without the Ruah abiding within the high place of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 25. But the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King, against the king. Amon. And the people of the land made Yoshiah the son, the, ki- the son king in his stead. Yoshiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. And he did that which was right in the sight of of Almighty Yahweh. And he walked in the ways of Dawid, his Avad. Moving to chapter 34, Yisrael, verse 2. And he declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. What is that? He stayed on the right path. He didn't try to find any shortcuts. He didn't veer to the right. He didn't veer to the left. For in the 18th year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after Yahweh, the Abba of Dawid, his Abba. Are we still seeking after Yahweh, Yisrael, to abide in the right paths, to do those things which are Sadiq, which are pleasing in his sight? When we bring an offering before him, it's an offering that is sweet unto his nostrils, that please him. It reminds me of Cain and Abel. Did Cain bring that which was pleasing to Almighty Yahweh? Was he pleased? No, he wasn't. But the offering of Abel, it pleased him. Hallelujah. For in the eight years of his, of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after Yahweh, the Abba of Dawid, his Abba. And in the twelfth year, it says here, he began to tahir. He began to purge, to cleanse. See, don't you see the same kingdom as Jerusalem, the house of Almighty Yahweh, his elected people. And yet, just in the passages that I have read, we've seen how back and forth, sin was allowed in, and yet, sin was purged out, was cleansed out. So here, it's a process, Yisrael. Sometimes it takes time for things, even in the body, whether it's cancer, whether it's a mere cold, things of that nature. Sometimes you get the right thing and it's gone the next day, just like that. And there's types of things that takes years. It takes time to be purged out of the body or out of the Ruach Yisrael. And in the twelfth year he began to purge Yahuda and Jerusalem from the high places and from the groves and from the carved images and the molten images. And they break down the altars of Balaam in his presence and the images that were on high above them. He cut down and the groves and the carved images and the molten images. He break them in pieces and made them and made dust of them. Do we remember when Jerusalem came out of Mizraim, out of Egypt? What did they do? They made a molten calf, did they not? And what happened? The anger of Moshe was wrong. And what did he do? He destroyed the calf, the molten image, the thing that they have made. They made it by their own desires, by their own lust. They used the gold that they was bound by 
out of Mizraim and made this golden calf. And what did Moshe do? He destroyed it. He ground it down to powder. And what did he do? He also caused them to drink of that iniquity. That was a type of judgment, Israel. Let us move on. So he made them dust. He made dust of them. And he strode it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them. And he burnt the bones of the Kohim upon the altars and cleansed Yehuda and Jerusalem. Why did he have to go through such great measures? That he even burnt the bones of the Kohim of those that were, um, that set up the rituals or the worshiping at those altars? That seemed like he just went a little too far. Seemingly, does it not, Israel? But he did not. We must allow the toil of Yahweh to burn any remnants, anything that stands as a structure base. Is, it not, is that not what the bones are for? It's to uphold the flesh of the body? Because if you didn't have any bones, you would just pile up to a heap, a heap of flesh. You wouldn't be able to do anything. So it was important that he burnt also the bones would represent the structural aspects of those altars or those high things that was lifted up in the high places of Almighty Yahweh in the Bayah Yisrael. So he had to destroy everything. We must understand that in our lives, Yisrael, everything, everything that is not of Yahweh, everything that displeases Yah. Don't we understand what displeases Yah? Sin. The transgression of the Torah. Does that not please Yah? So those things that cause us to sin or that try to entice us to sin, Israel, we must cast those things down. We must destroy them. We must grind them to powder. We must allow the Torah, the ish, the fire of Almighty Yahweh to burn those things. That there is no remembrance of them, Israel. It is very key and very important, Israel, that we do this. And he burned the bones of the Kohim upon the altars and cleansed Yehuda in Jerusalem. And so did he in the cities of Manasseh, of Ephraim, of Simeon, and to Naphtali, which the Maddox round about. Verse 7. And when he had broken down the altars and the groves, and had beaten the graven images into powder, and cut down all the idols, all the idols, Throughout all the land of Israel, he returned unto Jerusalem. So it started in Jerusalem. It started in the central location, in the capital. He started there, cleansing all things. It must start here, Israel, in the central place of all things. Which is that? It's the mind. It's the heart. Not this thing here that beats, but the mind. And if we start there, purifying just as the king did, beating the idols, the images, the thoughts, the concepts, those things that do not lead us in the path of Sadiq or righteousness, then we will find out throughout the body we will begin to see a change. Hallelujah. When we were renewed or when we were brought into this knowledge, that day that Yahweh said, you come this far, you're not going to go any farther. The sin's going to stop here. You are my elect. I'm letting you know this day that you are mine. Wasn't it not a process of things that had to drop off or things that we had to stop doing? Habits? It first started in the mind. The conviction. Conviction in the left. Oh man, I can't do that anymore. Should we miss those things? I don't miss those things. We shouldn't miss those things that we have been delivered from. What have we gained from those things? Nothing. Habits, you had to feed a habit. You had to keep doing those things to sustain a habit. And, and then if you really thought about it, even then while you were doing it, it wasn't even pleasing. But yet Yahweh has placed us in a way that is pleasing. Hallelujah. It's not hard on us. We grow. Hallelujah. We have his high. We have his life. We didn't have life on the other side. To this point. So Yahshua, Yahweh says right here that you're gonna this is the point where you change. 
You have sinned. You have come this far. No, no father. I want you going to stop right here. And what did he do? He allowed those things to be purged out. We stopped the old habits. It started from the mind or from the lab, and then it worked its way outwardly. We began to change our dress, our walk changed, our perception changed. But it had to start in the high place just as it started here in the high place of Jerusalem. And he cut down all the idol, idols throughout Israel, and he returned to Jerusalem. Verse 8. Now in the 18th year of his reign, when he had Tahir, or when he purged the land and the house, he sent Stephen, the son of Azaliah, and Masiah, the governor of the city, and John, the son of Jozah, Jehazah, the recorder. And what did they do? They had to repair the house of Almighty Yahweh. So even though there are things that are being destroyed or broken down in our lives, that has to be purged out, yet at the same time, Yahweh builds. So if, he takes, if we take out one of these pillars, does it not weaken the building? Do we not hear Ray Dawid last night on the broadcast and he was talking about understanding the structure of a building? If you start breaking this little corner over here, just break a little bit at a time, what's going to happen? The building is going to fall. So what did Yahweh do? Even as those things in our lives that was a structure to sin, Yahweh broke those things down, crushed those things. But at the same time, he replaced them with his Torah and with his Mishvah, that we would not crumble, that we would not fall. But little by little and time by time and over time, he built within us what he desired of us, Israel. He did not allow us to crumble. He did not allow his Torah just to rip us apart. But... Little by little, as he took out those things that displeased him, he placed his Torah. He allowed those to expound upon the word that we may gain understanding, that it will be a strength to our life, Israel. Yahweh knows what he's doing, Israel. Let us commit our lives unto him. To repair the house of Yahweh, his sovereign ruler, in verse 9. And when they came to Hikayah, the high Kohen, they delivered the money that was brought into the house of Almighty Yahweh, which the Levites had kept the doors and had gathered in the land of Manasseh and Ephraim. So it's important that we allow the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh to cleanse us. Is it going to feel tough to the flesh all the time? No. There are going to be pains. It's going to hurt. Are not we wounded in the house of friends? Don't you, if a true friend will wound you. If he sees something that you're doing that's not right, hey man, no, that's, that's, not, that's not how we do it. That's not how things done. You can't do that. You need to stop that. If you don't stop that, then we're, we're no longer friends. I'm not your buddy. It makes you check yourself. Why? Because you don't want to lose a true friend. You, don't want to, you know you're doing wrong. Even though your friend broke down your little, your little, you know, game there, yet it strengthened you. It caused you to have even more assurance in your friend, but also for you to do the thing that is right to do. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yahweh wants us to do the things that are sadiq, the things that are right, Yisrael. He don't want us to walk in the path that leads us to death, but life, an everlasting life in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Let us turn to the helium. To helium. Psalms 51, verse 1. That we have plenty of experience in this as being king over Yahweh's condition over his people. Did he sin? Yes, he sinned. But yet he repented. There has to be a place for or meet for repentance, Israel. Because Cain could not find this place or this meat or this substance that he needed that the gates of Sh Sh the Shemayons would be open that he may repent before Almighty Yahweh. Every man, it's not for every man to repent. We must understand that, Israel. Don't let the teaching of this world, oh, Yah, Yah, he wants everyone to be saved. That's not true. He's going to save his house. He's going to save his people. And there are those that he has saved or he has preserved for destruction. 
And that is the truth. So it's a lie for one to say, oh, Yahweh, he, he's going to desire, he wants, he desire everyone to, to be saved. That's not true. That's not in his plan. It wasn't in his plan from the beginning of all things. And his foreknowledge, he knew what he was doing, Israel. Yah. But yet look at us today that are sitting here. Those of you that are listening by via of live stream, we must keep hold. We must hold unto the Samuna that was given unto Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So Dawid, he understood the purging process. Did not Yahweh allow the judgment to come upon his kingdom? He was moved from his throne, ran for his life. Hallelujah. The judgment of Almighty Yahweh stayed in his house. Verse 1 to Helium 51, verse 1. He says, have mercy upon me, O Yahweh. I want the mercies of Yahweh upon me this day. I need it. O Yahweh, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude, a vast amount. A price can't be put on it, an amount can't be put on it. All I know is more. It's just what I need. According to the multitude of your tender mercy. Tender. Do we understand what tender is? Let's think about a steak. I've had them both ways. And nothing like a tough steak. It's hard to chew. It's hard to enjoy. The fibers of the meat get stuck in your teeth. And it doesn't digest very, it doesn't sit very well. But Yahweh has allowed his mercies to be tender. A tender steak. You can cut it with a fork, you really don't need a knife. It melts in your mouth. Hallelujah. The tender mercies of Almighty Yahweh. Come on, Israel, y'all. He's given us his tender mercies. He says, blot out my transgressions. I want you to blot out my transgressions. What is that? To wipe out, to stamp out, to remove any remnants of it, that it not be seen. I need my transgressions to be blotted out today, Israel. He says in verse 2, to wash me. But I want you to wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Did not we see in the kingdoms of Yahuda or Jerusalem how the kingdom was purged? That even any remnants or any bones, anything, was burnt up and consumed Israel. I want Yahweh to wash me thoroughly, that mine iniquities. That any remnants of anything in my life will be purged out. And he says, and cleanse me from my sin. We need to be cleansed from our sins today, Israel. We must allow the purging process. There's some things that are just eliminated then and there, then there's something that takes time. But that's why it takes the tender mercies of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. But there's a time, Israel, that we should come to and that we have grown in maturity, that we should not turn back into the thing. We shouldn't fall over the same sins and over the same iniquity times after time that we have to come before Yahweh in repentance, Israel. Yahweh has not redeemed us. He never not saved us, Israel, for us to walk into sin. And to go back and forth, that's not what he desired. He desired us to stay in the straight and narrow way. And cleanse me from my sin, verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgression. How many of us acknowledge our transgressions? Hallelujah. We have fallen short. We have not stayed on the right path as we should have. Constantly, Israel, Yah. So we plead for the mercies of Yahweh today. Hallelujah. Break me, Yahweh. Humble me, Yahweh, before your presence. Hallelujah. I desire that, Israel. And my sins, my iniquity, my transgression, I know what they are, Yahweh. I know what they are. They're ever before me. I see them. Your judgments. I understand I have transgressed your Torah. I know that while I was in this way, I should have stayed in the way, but I allowed my flesh... To, to have power over me. I decided that I would not walk after the Ruah, and I walked after my own way and my own mind. Verse 4. 
He says, against you, and you only have I sinned, have I transgressed, and have done this evil in your sight. What was the last time we bowed down on our knees and confessed unto Almighty Yahweh? Don't you know his ears is always open unto the cry of Israel? What was the last time we've cried? Or we even had a true pillar or a true prayer before Almighty Yah, Yisrael. He said, I have sinned and done evil in your sight, that you might be justified when you speak and clear when you judge. Yahweh, he is justified when he speaks unto us. He's justified when he judges us for our sins and for our iniquities, Yisrael. And Dawi, he understood this. He experienced that. Verse 5. He says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. But we're not shaped in iniquity, Israel. From our mother's womb, from birth, we went astray. We did not know Yahweh, but yet he knew us, Israel. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Dawi said, Behold, you desire. Truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden parts, you shall make me to know wisdom. Yahweh, he desires truth in the inward parts, Yisrael. Not the things we tried to hide, the iniquity. Oh, nobody knows that. Don't you know Yahweh knows that? Don't you know his eyes are upon the Sadiq, upon his house, upon his people? So why do we think we can hide things? Because I can't see him or because you can't see him? Because your Ishar, your wife doesn't see him, or your husband doesn't see him. It's not hidden from Almighty Yah, Yisrael. That's why it's so important that we allow the Torah to purge us. Hallelujah. Just as a tough laxative would purge the body, it hurts. We're wounded sometimes. There are pains, but in the end, Yisrael, the fruits will year for. There will be a comfort in the end of those things, Yisrael. So Yahweh, he desires truth in the inward part, it says in verse 6. And in the hidden parts, you shall make me to know wisdom. What is wisdom? It is an experience with Almighty Yahweh. He shall make us to know that. We shall hide that within the inward parts, Yisrael. Verse 7. He says, purge me with hyssop. What is hyssop? It's a type of herb that is used. Just as Akshimri. You remember that Akshimri? That's what it is, sin out. That's what hyssop is. It's that sinity. That's what it was. That's some you still you still take that? That's some rough stuff. Uh, hallelujah. Sinner. Oh, this hyssop. That's what Dawei wanted. He knew that it was gonna be a tough process and it would hurt. And there would be pains, but yet he knew that it took the hyssop. It took that herb. So he cried unto Yahweh, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. That hyssop or that sin that cleans you out. It pulls it all out of you, as Ak as would say. It pulls it all out. I don't leave nothing in there. And I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Not any washing or any chemical that we can use upon ourselves can get us as clean as Yahweh or as the Dhamma Yahshua can get us clean, Israel. Yah. So we don't have to try other detergents. The church world is full of different kind of detergents. They want you to try this, try that, do this, this concept, this doctrine. That's not what cleanses us. It's by the Dhamma Yahshua that cleanses. It's not by the silver and gold that, that redeems us, but it's by the Dom. It's by the blood of Yahshua HaMashiach that redeems us. Hallelujah. We cannot buy our nephews, Yisrael. Don't you know we have been paid for with a price? And the price was that dumb. It was the offering of Yahshua HaMashiach upon the state. So I want Yahweh to cleanse me. He's given everything that we need. We have Yahshua. That's all that we need, Israel. Yah. Allow Yahshua. And we know Yahshua, he's the word, is he not? We know he's the Torah. We know this book that we have has been written of him. He has fulfilled everything from the number of the prophets. He has fulfilled it all. So we know he is the Torah. So allow the Torah to cleanse you, to purge you from all things. Purge me with his, Dawi says. 
and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Do we hear joy and gladness? Hallelujah. That my bones, which you have broken, may rejoice. Did we talk about the bones? Hallelujah. Broken bones and my contriteness. I have fallen prostrate before you. There's nothing, I'm humble. There's nothing that stands up before your word, Almighty Yah. You have broken, that my broken bones may rejoice. That in this state that I'm in, in this lower state, that I may rejoice. Should we not give toll out unto Yahweh in all things? Whether we are high up in the mountain or low in the valley, we should give toll out unto Yahweh. Verse 9. He said, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Verse 10. Create in me a clean land. Do we not sing the song, Israel? O Yahweh, and renew, restore, rejuvenate, strengthen the right ruah within me. Can't you see Dawi on his knees? The judgments of Almighty Yahweh. Yahweh brought him low, just like he did Manasseh. Brought him low, humbled him. His Torah humbled him. And he cries out, cast me not away from your presence. I don't want to be cast from the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Where else is there to go? Did not the disciples say that to Yahshua HaMashiach? Yahshua asked, will you also leave me? The masses have left Yahshua HaMashiach. Would you elect ones leave me also? And they said, where, where will we go? They said, you only have the bread of life. So cast me not away from your presence, Almighty Yahweh, and take not your Kodesh, Ruach, from me. Where will we be without the Ruach of Yahweh? Even when you kind of veer off a little bit off the path, it's the Ruach that rebukes and corrects you. And it reminds you of the Torah that is written in your left. He said, restore, restore to me the joy of your Yasha, your salvation, your word. And uphold me. How many of us want Yahweh to uphold us? Hallelujah. I want Yahweh to uphold me, to keep me afloat, to guide me. He said, uphold me with your free Ruah, your spirit. Fill me. Keep me, Yahweh. With your free spirit, your unmerited pardon. Hallelujah. That guides me, that leads me into all truth. We're going to stay in, in Psalms for a little while, Yisrael, y'all. But let us go to chapter 64, verse 1. Is it Yahweh tough? He's allowed us to enter into this by it to rest. Hallelujah, on his Shabbat day. That he may purify us, that he may cleanse us, that we may produce unto him an offering that is acceptable. Hallelujah. And full of fire for all that he has done, Israel. To Helium chapter 64, verse 1. Hear my voice, O Yahweh, in my prayer. Preserve my life from Fear of the enemy. What is our enemy, Israel? What is our enemy? Anything that tries to detour you or turn you, whether it's a brother, whether it's sister, whether it's wife, whether it's husband, if it detours you or tries to turn you off of the path that Yahweh has placed, that is your enemy. Your flesh tries to rise up. Even the element of your mind is your enemy. Don't you know your worst enemy is yourself? It is yourself. That's your worst, not even Satan. Your worst enemy is yourself. It is what you allow into your bosom. Yahweh has given man such a power to choose. Come on, Israel, between that which is right and that which is wrong. Has he not written the Torah and I love Israel? There's things even morally by instinct that even animals know. But you tell me man has trespassed the Torah so much and denied Yahshua HaMashiach, has become more wicked and progressively wicked, that those things do not even bother him anymore. He can shoot a man in the head 
And he would not even sweat it. Walk off. Piece of trash to him. Come on, Israel. Verse 2. He said, hide me. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Don't you know the wicked? Even when we abide in a spirit that is wicked, Israel, there are secret counsels trying to undermine the Torah of the Mitzvah of Yah. That's what a wicked man do. He looks for a way to bring you down when you are walking straight. Even your friends in the world, they see you turn, there's something different about you. They try to, well, what about this? Well, what about that? They try to undermine you. That's what the nature of the world do, Israel. Yah. He said, how me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter word. Don't you know what an arrow does? The Ogden Hunt, those of you who have seen arrows, born arrows, they're meant to afflict. Pain, but not only that, they're designed that the blood may flow. When you shoot an animal, whether it's a deer or whatever you're hunting, buffalo, you want the blood to drain as quick as possible. Because if that arrow goes in and there's no blood, that animal can run for miles, live for days with that wound. So the blood has to pour out. That's what sin and iniquity does to us, Kedushas. And we allow sin and iniquity to pierce our limb, our hearts, it's going to cause us to bleed. It's going to cause that life that Yahweh has given us to pour out Israel. That's, what, that's why you must be very careful what you allow into your bosom, what you allow into your mind, Israel. But that's what the wicked, they bend their bows and they shoot their arrows, even bitter words. That's what bitter words does. How many of us have spoken bitter words? Just be honest. And what was the intent of that? To wound, to hurt, to try to inflict as much pain as, pain as we could. That's what bitter words does, Yisrael. Verse 4. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Are we perfect, Yisrael? Yes, we're perfect. Come on. The Dhamma Yahshua. Does it not move? Sure, there's a cleansing process, but Yahweh, it's not what you do that make you perfect. It's the word of Yahweh that makes you perfect. If I would depend on just what I do in myself, I will be a long shot for entering to the kingdom. Hallelujah. But I have a moon eye. Do we have a moon eye today, Israel? Yeah? Hallelujah. We have been made perfect by the Dharma, Yahshua HaMashiach. So we, when, when Torah talks about those that are perfect, it's talking about Yisrael. It's talking about Yisrael. Sure, there's a place that we all must get to. And Yahweh will take us there, Israel. He's going to uphold us with the right hand of his judgment, with the right hand of his word, Israel. Don't fret. Don't fear. Don't be afraid of what we see or what we endure or the trials that come our way. Yahweh's going to bring us to every one of them. He brought us this far, did he not? And it says here, it says here that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Who do you think he's talking about? Us. He's talking about us just right now. Hallelujah. Come on, enlighten yourself. Have faith, Imuna, and the Torah. They're not talking about the fire in recent weeks. Not only does the fire purge us, cleanses us, sometimes burns us, but by that same fire, it preserves us, Yisrael. I know it's metaphorically speaking, but it's so much truth in that, Yisrael. Was not there a hedge around Yo? What do what, what, what you think that hedge was? You think it was just a, a grove of trees? Satan could come through that. Don't you know Satan could not touch Yo? But what was around him? Was it walls? Was it like Manasseh? Did he have walls around him? Satan, he, don't, he, he could come through a wall. He's a ruler. He's a spirit. Come on. What was that? It was the fire. Satan could not stand the fire of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He could not stand the judgment that surrounded Yo, the Ruach Hakodesh of Almighty Yahweh that surrounded Yo. That's what surrounds us is the fire of Almighty Yahweh. It's the Torah, Yisrael, that keeps us. It's a fire that keeps us. Verse 5. It says, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. 
Talking about the enemies, his enemies, Israel, even the enemy of our own mind. They commune of lying snares privately. They say, who shall see them? Don't you know the enemy set snares up for us? They try to hide them. Don't you know during warfare, one of the things that were used and that worked very well in warfare were what they call the landmines. They were hidden to the dirt where the enemy could not see them. And what happened? As they tread across an open field or a certain place, they step on that mine, boom. That's what the enemy does, Israel. That's what the mind of wickedness does. That is what that unfaithfulness of love does, Israel. It sets up landmines or snares privately. Who should see them? How do we know? How can we predict where those falls, where those landmines are, Israel? You must have the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh. The night Dawid pray for the Ruach to lead into God him. Verse 6. They search out injustices. They, accom- they accomplish a, delight, a diligent search. Both the inward, throughout of every one of them, and the heart is deep. But Yahweh shall shoot at them with an arrow, the fire brand of Almighty Yah. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. The judgment that the enemy tries to put upon us, Yahweh is going to allow those same judgments to be turned upon themselves. The firebrands and the arrow that the wicked shoot, Yahweh is going to allow those arrows to come right back at them. All that see them shall flee away. Verse 9. And all the sons of Adam shall fear. And shall declare the work of Almighty Yahweh, for they shall wisely consider of his doings. Do we consider of the doings of Almighty Yahweh, his judgment, as he has kept us? We have seen those that have fallen astray, those that have not been enlightened by the Torah, by the Ruach HaKodesh. Verse 10. For the righteous shall be glad in Yahweh. How many of us are glad today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're righteous, you shall be glad in Yahweh and shall trust him. And all the upright and left shall, hallelujah, Yahweh, shall barak Yahweh, hallelujah. I barak Yahweh this day, for it is him that has kept me. And it's by his Torah that preserves me. And it's by the dam of Yahshua that I am cleansed, that I am washed. Hallelujah. Wash me thoroughly as thou we prayed, Yah. Hallelujah, that I may be clean, whiter than snow. Chapter 65, moving right along, Israel, y'all, verse 1. Praise waits for you, O Yahweh, in Zion. And you, sh- and you shall the vow be performed, or the promise. O you that hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. Iniquities prevail against me for our transgressions. You shall purge them away. Yahweh is going to purge those things away, Israel. No matter what comes our way, Yahweh is going to remove that. Well, I don't have the power of the strength right now to overcome this. Yahweh is going to move that. That mountain, Yahweh is going to move it. That river we think we cannot cross, how are we going to get to the other side of this? Yahweh shall make a way. And he has made a way. Hallelujah. All we have to do is believe, Israel. Just believe on him that Yahweh has sent. And even out of your very heart, out of your very belly shall flow rivers of living water. Did not Yahweh, through Moshe, allow the rivers to part that Israel shall pass unto safely through the Red Sea, Israel? Yahweh should make a way. He is the way. When there is no way, Israel, he is the way. So let us turn unto him. Hallelujah. Let us pray unto Yahweh, for he is our help. Here is our hope. Verse 4. Blessed, Barak is the man whom you choose and calls to approach to you that he may dwell in your courts. Are we not in the courts today? We shall be satisfied with the tough, with the goodness of your house. 
even of your Kodesh, great tabernacle. The great tabernacle of Almighty Yahweh. That's where we should abide, Israel, Yah. The high place of Yah and his tabernacle, Jerusalem, which is the capital, which is the high place. Again, in Psalms, turn with me to chapter 79, verse 4. To Helium 79, verse 4. We should talk about the purging. Hallelujah. Just as Yah and the Torah continuously in so many parts talk about gold, becoming pure gold. I talked about that many a times as we traverse through the sevenfold voices of Almighty Yahweh. Right now we're somewhat abiding in the fire of Yah. Gold and silver. We know when you put heat to gold, if it's got impurities in it, it takes an intense heat to bring out the impurities or the draws. The same thing with silver, Yisrael Yah. So we want Yahweh to put us to the test. Put the heat to us. Hallelujah. That those things which are not of him will surface or come to the top. We want to be clean above all things before Almighty Yahweh. He's not going to accept any offering. He's not going to accept a body that is full of unclean things, Yisrael Yah. We must have the pure white garment of his Ruah. To Helium 79 verse 4. We are become a reproach unto our neighbors, a scorn and derision to them that are round about us. How long, O Yahweh, will you be angry continually? Did you know Yahweh, he is angry with the wicked every day? Should we walk after the spirit of wickedness, Yisrael Yah? How long, O Yahweh, will you be angry continually? Shall your jealousy burn like an ish, like a fire? Don't you know Yahweh, he gets jealous. We are his bride. Are we not, Yisrael Yah? But yet we, 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 we're looking at other bridegrooms, desiring other bridegrooms or other ways, other paths, instead of desiring Yahshua HaMashiach, desiring Almighty Yahweh. Verse 6, pour out your wrath upon the heathen that have not known you, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon your name. For they have devoured Yaakov and lay waste his dwelling place. Oh, remember, oh, remember, not against us, the former or our former iniquities. We don't want Yahweh to remember our former iniquities, Israel. Yah. We don't want when we stand before judgment or that day of judgment that all those things that we've done go before us or come behind us, Israel. Yah. That, that would be a very sad day. Oh, remember not against us the former iniquities. And again it says here, let your tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Verse 9. Help us, O Yahweh, of our salvation. Is not Yahweh our salvation? Yes, right, Yah. For the splendor of your name, and deliver us, and what does it say? And purge. Purge us. Cleanse us, wash us, and purge away our sins for your name's sake. That's a lot at stake there, isn't it? For Yahweh's name's sake. Let you know that Yahweh, that Yahshua went to the state for Yahweh's name's sake. And not only that, for us, Yisrael. Verse 10. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is Yahweh their sovereign ruler? Where is he? Where has he gone? Look at this people. They're brought low. They don't have any wealth. A mere dust of the earth. Where is Yahweh, their sovereign ruler? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the vengeance of the blood of your servants, which he has shed. Let the singing of the prisoner come before you. According to the greatness of your power, preserve you those that are appointed to die. Don't you know we are appointed every man? There's a time for every man to die. But yet, Yahweh preserves us, Yisrael, through his mishpah, through his Torah, that even in this physical death, that we're not separated from Almighty Yahweh. 
Hallelujah. So even though we pass from this life, yet there's a life that is to come for us, Israel. We don't want to be separ separated from Yahweh because that's death. Even in this physical man, there are those that are walking dead men. Why? Because they don't have the rock of Yah. They have not been enlightened by the truth of Almighty Yahweh. But Yahweh has enlightened us, Israel. So we should, lie, we should walk in his life. And not only that, but internal, eternal life. Verse 12. And render to our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach. Wherewith they have reproached to you, O sovereign Yahweh. So we, our people, and the sheep of your pasture will give you todah forever. Todah at the judgment of Almighty Yahweh being wrought to the heathen? Yes, todah. We shall show forth your praises unto all generations. So even at this purging process, Yisrael, when we are broken, we have been brought lowly. It seems like the heathen has trampled us underfoot. It is not so, Yisrael. It is Yahweh that redeems us. It is Yahweh that keeps us. And it is Yahweh that brings us into victory. Hallelujah. The world is not going to overcome us. Even though we seem weak, it is just the humbleness. It is just the humbleness by the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. See, what they don't know is that, that we have a strength that they cannot see. That they do not understand. Well, what is that? It's the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 21. Hallelujah. I want to begin reading. Concerning the purging. Hallelujah. Purge me with hyssop that we cried unto Almighty Yahweh, that I may be cleansed. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 21. Talking about Jerusalem. Throughout Torah, we've seen time after time, example after example. Why is that? Why is that in Torah? That we may read, correlate, and understand what has taken place. That we not fall in the same predicament. But yet we do, and we have fallen in the same predicament. But it is written for our understanding and for an example unto us, Yisrael. So this is what the Torah had to say about Yisrael. Oh, how the faithful city has become a harlot. That is a, 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 a very grave downgrade. One that was faithful, walking in the Torah of the midst of Almighty Yahweh, steadfast, has become a harlot, one that goes out of the boundary of marriage, that allowed just anything to come in unto her. That's what has happened unto Israel. We have allowed any and everything to come, on, come into our bosom, into our mind. It says, she was full of justice, righteousness lodged, Within it, talking about Jerusalem, but now murderers. What do we allow? What have? What is festering in our love, Israel? Is it murdering, killing? Have we became this harlot that has just allowed anything into the bosom? Unclean, filthy, stinks, willing to do any and everything. Is that what we have become, Israel? Hallelujah. I brought Yahweh for, for the purging of his Torah. Even though he identifies us, Yisrael, yet he always has a remedy. Even though it seems like we are in block by four walls and Yahweh's goddess, yet he also has a way for us to come clean and to come out of it, Yisrael. Listen at this example, verse 22, chapter 1. Your silver has become dross. What is dross? Dross is the thing that is not usable. It can't be used for anything. It has to be just thrown away. It's useless. But it says here that the silver has become as dross, and your wine is mixed with water. When you want wine, and this is talking about more than just the fermented wine, but also the juices. When you, I had grape juice just the other day. And one thing about grape juice is somewhat strong, isn't it? But you don't want 
your grape juice or your juice, whether it's orange juice or any type of wine or juice you may enjoy, you don't want water added to that. Water, if you keep adding water to that, it loses its taste. It loses that sense of, of sweetness. I mean, when you drink a juice, you want that to kind of linger in your mouth a little bit as you go for the next sip, Yisrael. But it says that your wine, the perfection of the pure things, has been mixed with water. Verse 23. Your princesses are rebellious and captains are thieves. Everyone loves gifts and bribes and follows after rewards. Is that what we have done, Israel? The world offers us gifts, offers us rewards. Did not Satan try to offer Yahshua HaMashiach? Were they not in a high place? Did they not take him up where they could see all the kingdoms of the world? And what did he try to do? Try to offer him something. Try to bribe Yahshua HaMashiach. Try to give him somewhat of a reward. They judge not the fatherless. Neither does the cause of the widow come unto them. It's talking about Jerusalem. It's talking about us, Israel. Therefore saith sovereign Yahweh of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Alas, I will, I will ease of my adversaries and avenge myself of my enemies. I will turn my hand upon you. And it says purely, or continuously, purge away your dross. I brought Yahweh for that. He said he would continually purge away our dross. As you know, he's today purging away our dross continuously. Does not the blood still pump through our veins, Yisrael? Then the blood of Yahshua is also continues to flow. Hallelujah. He said, I will purely purge away your dross as with lie. What is lie? How many of us know what lie? Lie is. Of us old heads and those that have heard know what lie is. It's simply soap. And it's, it's really not this, this, you know, stuff, this dowel or whatever you, you want to call it. You buy that slick stuff. It's a rough stuff. It's, it's got some scrubbing to it. Hallelujah. It, it cleanses and it probably gets down deep. But that's what Yahweh said he would do. He said, I will purely purge away your dross with lie. And take away your alloy. What is alloy? Alloy is a type of metal or substances. It doesn't really have to uh, generally be metal. That you add to strengthen or that you add to soften a material. It's just an additive. So if we're, Yahweh deems us as gold or as silver, do we want alloys in the gold or the silver? And he says, I will restore, verse 26, your judges as at the first. How much or how important is judgment in our lives, Yisrael? It is very important. You have to have those that judge. You must have the ruah of judgment, right, that you're able to distinguish between right and wrong. If you don't have a sense of judgment, you don't know what's right and wrong. You don't know what's right and wrong. So Yahweh said, I will restore your judges at the first. And all your counselors at the beginning, at the beginning of all things. Afterward, you shall be called the guarded city of righteousness, the faithful city. So no more Jerusalem would be called a harlot or be equal to a harlot. But once again, a faithful ish or a faithful servant unto Almighty Yahweh. Verse 27. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her converse with righteousness. Verse 28. And the destruction of the transgressors of the sinners shall be altogether. And they that forsake Yahweh shall be consumed. We don't want to be consumed. That's a fire. The indignation of Almighty Yahweh, his judgment upon a perverse generation, those that continuously sin against Almighty Yahweh, his fiery indignation, his ish, the coals that shall fall from the Shemayim shall consume the wickedness of a people. Did not um, Solomon and Gomorrah, was, was it not consumed? Did I not talk about that the last time? Solomon and Gomorrah, the coal or the voice of Almighty Yahweh, his Ruach moved, and Solomon and Gomorrah was consumed. There was not anything left. Not a remembrance, 
There was not even dust that was left there, Yisrael, but everything was consumed. So so Yahweh destroyed all the transgressors and those that sin, the sinners, altogether. And those that forsake Yahweh shall be consumed. I want to go to Barak, just a few verses in um, Barak. Second Barak, chapter 85, verse 12. And some of you that don't have the, the, that Torah, part of Torah, just listen. Hallelujah. It says, for behold, Yahweh the Most High will call all these things to come. What is that? His judgment, his indignation, his wrath poured out. It says, there will not be any opportunity to repent anymore. Did I not talk about repentance? Did not Dawi repent? Did not Manasseh repent, Yisrael, before Almighty Yahweh? So this is saying here, there's a time that is coming. That Yahweh is going to cut off that time where we're able to repent or come before him, Yisrael. It even talks about that in Revelation. Those that are clean at that time, the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach, let them be clean still. And those that are filthy, let them be filthy still. So is this not correlating with Torah? Hallelujah. It says there will be no opportunity to repent anymore, nor a limit to the times. Nor a duration of the periods or change to the rest. Nor an opportunity for prayer. No opportunity for prayer. Nor sending up a petition. Nor giving knowledge, nor giving love. No opportunity of, it says, repentance. Nor supplications. Nor offerings. No prayers of the fathers, no intercessions of the prophets, no help of the righteous. Verse 13. There is a proclamation of judgment to the corruption regarding the way, to the fire and to the path that leads to the growing, glowing coals. Therefore, there is one Torah by one. Don't we know that there's only one Torah? Yisrael. Right, one word and an end for all, all those who exist. The last verse. Then will he make alive those he has found. Has he found us, Yisrael? Right, I know Yahweh has found me. And he has pulled me out of a horrible pit. And it says, and he will purge from them sins. And at that time, he will destroy those who are polluted with those sins. Have we been purged from our sins, Yisrael? Yeah. Yahweh has purged us by the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach. So if we that are purged from our sins, if the times are rough for us, and we scarcely make it into the Melchut of Almighty Yahweh, what will happen to those Hallelujah, they have not been purged for their past sins, Israel. They should not have a chance of redemption. Did not I read there would be a time where there would be no more repentance or place or a time for repentance anymore? There's a time that there'll be no more prayer, Israel. That time is approaching us. So what should we do? While Yahweh allows us this space right now, Israel, we should do all we could do. To search our hearts. To do the things that are sadiq, that are right to our neighbor, to our op, and to our hope. We should not lie to one another. We should not deceive one another. But we should walk according to all the statues and the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. When? Right now. Right now. While Yahweh is still the tender mercies and his loving kindness are still in abundance, Yisrael. Because there is, there, there's an end to all things, Yisrael. Hallelujah. When Yahweh brings us all to a close. Hallelujah. So what should we do? We should be making ourselves ready now. Hallelujah. Allow the Torah to purge you. It's only by the dime of Yahshua, his word, that shall purify us, Yisrael. For what purpose? Why? Why? That we would be acceptable as an offering unto Almighty Yahweh. That when we open our mouths, when we come into the presence of Almighty Yahweh, into us by it, that 
it will not be rejected, but that Yahweh will receive the praises that come forth out of our mouth. He has given us breath. So why should we not use that very same breath to speak his name, to uplift his name? Hallelujah. Even amongst the heathen, we should proclaim the precious name of Almighty Yahweh. Because he has given us so much, has he not, Israel? Even in, in this short space of time, this morning, he has given us so much. Hallelujah. He has scrubbed us some. He has scorched us with the fire. Hallelujah. Why? To keep us in the place. To prod us in the place, Israel. Yahweh shall have a people. Hallelujah. Even despite yourself, Yahweh is going to redeem us, Israel. Hallelujah. As I bring this nearly to a close, Israel. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Told to Yahweh. I'm going to read verse 1. Through verse 21, concerning the purification or the purging of the house of Israel. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, You therefore, my son, be strong in the free, unmerited pardon that is in Yahshua HaMashiach. Do we believe that there is free, unmerited pardon? Hallelujah. There's a place open for us, Yisrael, in the eyes of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same, he says, commit you to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Verse 3. You therefore, he's talking to us, Yisrael, even though this was written Many years ago, yet the Torah, the words of Yahweh, are still as as alive today as it was then. He said, you therefore, he says, endure. What is it to endure? It is to stand, no matter what the winds or the waves may bring. It reminds me of of, um, that instance in Torah that there was a man that built his house. By the sand. He used that for his foundation. And when the winds and the waves and the rain beat upon it, it did not stand. But yet there was a wise man that built his house upon the rocks. And what happened to when, when the wind and the waves came? It stood. So let us make sure that we are planted in the sure foundation, which is the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. That we may what? Endure. Hardness as a tough soldier... Of Yahshua HaMashiach. How many of us in that army today, Israel? A soldier. Hallelujah. Also being warriors. Gadol, great men. Verse 4. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life. So you, you can't war. You can't fight this battle fervently. If we are still hanging on to certain things of this life or the affairs of this life, Yisrael, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Don't you know Yahweh has chosen us, Yisrael, to fight? So we need to fight. Did not Yahshua fight? I I think about that. You got those that say, oh, you should be humble. You shouldn't fight. No, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they had some words to say to the king, did they not? They said, oh king, we know that Yahweh has set you in this place, but in this matter, we're not going to hold back. And believe me, they didn't hold back. I mean, the king, he, he was surprised. So we should not hold back, Yisrael. There's an aspect of humbleness that this church world ha- has, has, uh, has uh, grossly, I can't think of the word, has grossly polluted Yisrael. They think we should be humble, we shouldn't fight, or we should just give in to any and everything. That's not, that's not, y- y- Yahweh, Yahshua, was he not humble? When he went into the tabernacle of the body of Almighty Yahweh, and there was uh, selling in the temple, there was changes there, they were doing this in the place of Pilate, the place of prayer. Was he humble? Oh, yes, he was humble. 
No, y- y'all, no, Yahshua is humble. That, th- that's showing you the humbleness. Why? Because he stood on the Torah. When you are one that is humble, Israel, y'all, you will not set the Torah to the side. You are humble under the mishvah, under the leading, under the guidance of that which is written. So was Yahshua, was he humble? Yes, he was humble. See, humbleness is standing on the sure foundation of the Torah. So he went in there, he, he whipped the money changers. Did he not? He scourged them. Was he humble? Sure he was humble. Why? Because he was the Torah and he abided in the Torah. Was it right what he did? Yes. So let us be humble. Soldiers, but yet humble, that we fight this fight unto the death, Yisrael. That we're humble under the leading of Yahshua HaMashiach. Is he not the leader? Is not he the general? So we humble ourselves under him and we fight. Come on, Yisrael. We don't let the enemy trample us underfoot. That's not what the meaning of humbleness is, Yisrael. It's standing and abiding in the Torah and the Mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. Now, if you step out of that, then you're not humble. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Don't that add a, 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 a better meaning to the word humble, Yisrael? That we don't step out of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Verse 4 again. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries or to... Uh, Go forward in his reign. Yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. So we must strive lawfully. We must continue in this path, obeying the mishvah of the Torah of Yahweh. What will Yahweh do? He will bring us, as the old condition would say, to higher heights and deeper depths in Yahshua HaMashiach. It says that the husband man that labors must be first partaker of the fruit. Did not Yahshua labor, Yisrael? Was he not first partaker of the fruit? What was that? The fruit of suffering? That's a fruit. Of endurance? Did he not endure everything that we endure today? Yet without sin, Yisrael. That's why we must allow the Ruah of Yahshua HaMashiach to endow us or to fill us. Consider, consider what I say. And Yahweh give you understanding in all things. Remember that Yahshua HaMashiach of the seed of Dawid was raised from the dead according to my message. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to bonds, but the word of Yahweh is not bound. So even though, Yisrael, it seems like that we're, we're bound or we're being held in captivity, the world surrounding us, they seem strong in number, do they not? Do they not, Yisrael? They seem like they can just trample us without even a thought. But it says here, but the word of Yahweh, it is not bound. We're not bound, Yisrael. The world cannot overcome us. Therefore, he says in verse 10, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Yahshua HaMashiach with internal honor. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall live with him. Did not Yahshua, did not he die on the state of Israel, but yet he was raised from the grave. That is our fate, Israel. If we believe that the way that we are in today is the way of Almighty Yahweh, we'll be willing to die for it. And if we die in the same Ruach, the same way, in the same uh, way that Yahshua HaMashiach died, then we shall be raised up also in the latter days, Yisrael. In verse 12, verse 11, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, We shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. That's faithful, isn't that not, Yisrael? Even if you deny him, he cannot deny himself. He must do that which he has spoken, 
and that which has been prophesied of Yahshua HaMashiach. And he did do that, even unto the state of Israel. Verse 14. Of these things, put him in remembrance. Should we not put him in remembrance? What he's done? What he has done for us, Israel? Charging them before Yahweh that they strive not about words to no profit. So we should not strive for those things that profit not, Israel. Lies, things that do not um, strengthen us in the walk of Yahshua HaMashiach, but to subverting of, but to the subverting of the hearers. Verse 15. He says, to study, to show yourself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings. What is that? Worthless talk? Foolishness? That's what that is, Israel. For they will increase to more wickedness. And the world, word will eat as does a canker. That's what babbling do, does. That's what vain speech does, Yisrael. Of whom, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have error, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrew or overthrow the faith of some. Should we listen to those that say the resurrection has not happened? Or those that lie concerning the message of Yahshua HaMashiach? No. Because if we don't have Imuna in the resurrection, Yisrael, where is our hope in being raised from the dead again? Or seeing Yahshua HaMashiach face to face? Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh, it stands assured. Having this seal, that Yahweh knows them that are his. Hallelujah. So even when we didn't know Yahweh, Yahweh, he knew us, and he knows us even to this day, Israel. So stand, stand in the moon now, that Yahweh shall keep us. And let everyone that names the name of Yahweh, of Yahshua HaMashiach, depart from iniquity. That's a type of purging, Yisrael. We must depart from iniquity. When the chance come or the opportunity, we must walk away. We must flee from it. We must depart from it, Yisrael. Verse 20, as I'm bringing this to a close. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. And my last verse for the day, Israel, because I want us to enjoy, enjoy the Shabbat. We should be enjoying the Shabbat, resting in his Torah, hearing the word. Let us not hear the word that's going forth today, Israel. Let it go in one word, ear and out the other. But let us practice, let us do that which we have heard today. Let us abide in the Torah. Allow the Torah to purge out the wickedness, the dross out of our love, Yisrael, that we can present ourselves daily, every day, every hour, every minute, every second of a day, as a pure offering unto Almighty Yah. Verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel to honor. How many of us want to be a vessel to honor today? I want to be a vessel to honor. I want when when my eye or my hope see me or when the world see me, that they see the glow of Yahshua HaMashiach. A vessel of honor. Made Kodesh. How we made Kodesh? Are we allowing the potter, which is Yahshua HaMashiach, to mold us and to make us into the image of to his image Yisrael? Made Kodesh and meat for the master's use. You think Yahweh, he wants us tough and hardened towards his Torah? No, he wants us pliable 
as I talked about that piece of steak. He wants us tender. So that when he touches Yisrael, that it doesn't take much for us to break. He wants us humble before him. Like I said, humbleness is walking in the Torah, walking in his mitzvah, and not giving in unto sin or giving in unto the world. And meet for the master's use. And prepare for what? To every tub work. I want to be prepared for every tub work. Whatever Yahweh place before me, it's tough, Israel. Whether it's by affliction, whether it's by pains, whether it's by suffering, I know that it's from Almighty Yahweh. It is a tough work. Why? To purge and to purify me, that I may be a vessel prepared, meet for the Master's use. Hallelujah. I want to be meet for the Master's use. Was not Yahshua meet for the Master's use? Did not he do all things that please Almighty Yahweh. Come on, Israel. Yah. Yahweh has given us the power to do, to abide in his Torah, just as Yahshua HaMashiach abided in his Torah. And is he, is he not in us, Israel? Yah? He said if we would abide in him, remain in him, that he will or shall abide in us. And I believe he abides in us, Israel. Yah. Hallelujah. As long as we continue in his Torah. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, you all, I pray this message has been an inspiration to your love, that we stand, Israel. Yes, we stand as, as a humble people under the leading and the guiding of Almighty Yahweh, but we don't allow any place to the enemy. Not any place, Israel. So let us not only be soldiers, but let us have the heart of a warrior, Israel, that we're willing to give up our life for the things which are sadiq, for the things that are right. Hallelujah. And the continue to allow the Dhamma Yahshua. He's not dead, Israel. Yah. He's still alive. Yeah. Hallelujah. We should sing that old, old song. Yahshua's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, Yahshua. He's not dead. He's still alive. Yahshua. He's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. Come on, Israel. Yahshua's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, Yahshua, he's not dead. He's still alive. I said, Yeshua, he's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. One more time, Israel. Let us stand to our feet. Yeshua, not dead. He's still alive, oh Yahshua, he's not dead, he's still alive, oh Yahshua, he's not dead, hallelujah, he's still alive, I can feel him in my hand, I can feel him in my feet, I can feel him all over me, hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So do you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Alko Israel, let us turn to Jerusalem, the capital. For we know that as long as we are in bondage in this world, and we are in bondage, but yet we have been made free by the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach, that we should shoo, that we should turn unto the high place of Almighty Yahweh where his name is written. Abba Yahweh, we do tell to you for this day, this beautiful day you have given us. And we do barak you for all things, Abba Yahweh. For we have truly labored these past six days, and yet you have given us this day of rest. And we do barak you, Yahweh, for we have been renewed. We have been restored, Abba Yahweh, to what? To press on. That we may see what the end shall be. We do barak you, and we do ask that those that have come from near and far, those that are listening by fear of live stream, that your Ruach HaKadosh will reign upon us and fill us, Yah. Fill us up, Yah, until we desire no more. And all things we do, Barak, and we do ask that your Ruach 
will rest upon Reah Dawid as a fire, that the coals from your throne will rest upon his mouth, that he will not spare, but he, that he will proclaim your truth, Yahweh, with a vigor and with reassurance. And all things we do, Barak, you in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Yahweh! Hallelujah! Yahweh Barak, Kol Yisrael, Hallelujah!